How's it going everyone? Biscuits here. Factions and guilds have always played a major role in Bethesda games. Some of them are memorable fan favourites, with intriguing backgrounds and motivations that have played a major part in the games, while others are smaller groups and in some cases have been largely neglected in the world's lore and are a missed opportunity. So how can Starfield make the best use of factions? So far we know about two main factions in Starfield, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. Several smaller factions have been mentioned, like the Ecliptic Mercenaries, the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet, Violent Spaces, and the House of Varun. The United Colonies are the most powerful military and political faction in the game, possibly the original faction to settle in the settled systems, the location where the game takes place. The Free Star Collective are a group of individual states that are loosely joined together in their shared pursuit of independence from the United Colonies and all their annoying laws and spaceship safety guidelines. These two main factions were at war before the start of the story, and they could pick up their sci-fi arms once again at some stage during the game, possibly related to whatever the player uncovers about the secrets of the universe while working for Constellation. Before the dark times. Before the Empire. One thing that I wouldn't like to see in Starfield is the narrative of being forced to pick a side to support in the case of war breaking out between these groups. I think that this would detract from the overall enjoyment of Starfield being mostly a space exploration game and having the freedom to play as whoever you want to be. Of course we could still join a side, if we felt like it. In past Bethesda games, faction wars are always prominent. Think of the Stormcloaks versus the Imperials in Skyrim, the Brotherhood versus the Enclave in Fallout 3, and the Brotherhood, again, versus the Institute, with some meddling from the Railroad, in Fallout 4 as examples. Starfield could possibly follow a similar vein. The key point is, though, despite the world's war happening around the player, having the option to pick a side or avoid joining any side, ignoring the war altogether, is key to giving the player a sense of freedom and choice. I hate being forced to pick a side in a conflict, especially if I don't agree with or connect with either side involved. Giving the player the freedom to say, no, I don't like any of you, you are all psychopaths, leave me out of this, is crucial in giving the most freedom to players in a storyline that follows a big end battle scenario, in my opinion. While Fallout 3 didn't have an option in this regard, Skyrim did, and so did Fallout 4, in a sense, although probably not to the extent or in the manner that many players would have appreciated. The Minutemen faction in Fallout 4 have been compared to the Yes Man option in Fallout New Vegas, in that they became a faction directly owned and controlled by the player, with the goal of allowing them to complete the story through that faction. With the Minutemen, you become their general, and although you have Preston Garvey nagging you through the whole game, you are its true leader. At the end of the day, it does provide you with the somewhat limited tools to craft a faction to your own taste, to some extent. I always dress up my settlers in raider gear, because let's face it, commanding an army of angry, pitchfork wielding, antique hat wearing farmers is not that exciting, and the raiders look infinitely cooler. Providing a neutral option for the player in Starfield, whether that be a player controlled faction, possibly such as Constellation, or simply allowing the player to choose avoid joining the war altogether, would provide maximum freedom and choice for the player, in my opinion. So how could guilds fit into Starfield's universe? Guilds, I said guilds, in the context of Bethesda games are smaller factions or groups who work isolated from the major factions in the story. They have their own ideals and agendas, independent from the surrounding factions. How the player interacts with them often involves following a series of story-based missions to further that particular guild's goals. By successfully completing these tasks, the player will rise in standing with said guild, and eventually receive bonuses, perks, and equipment unique to that guild. Two examples of guild-like groups are the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood from the Elder Scrolls games. The Thieves Guild are a collection of organized professional criminals who are bound by the Honor Among Thieves principle. The Dark Brotherhood 
are a shadowy organization of assassins operating in the uh, shadows. In the case of Skyrim, both guilds can be joined by the player if they so wish to do so. There are examples of guild-like groups in the Bethesda Fallout games, although they could be considered more to be small factions and are not particularly well developed, normally confined to a specific game rather than to the series as a whole. Two that come to mind are the Atom Cats from Fallout 4 and Riley's Rangers from Fallout 3. As we mentioned before, it seems that we, as the player, will perhaps start the game as part of Constellation, the organization known as the Last Group of Space Explorers. The Last Group of Space Explorers. Constellation could well be a guild of sorts, with a rich history, a space of code of honor, key historical events, and different leaders through the years, depending on the length of time they have been around. But there will be other groups, or guilds with their own motivations and goals. Some of these goals may work against the efforts of Constellation, and it may be down to us to solve these conflicts. For example, the House of Varun are a group of religious zealots who may be opposed to Constellation poking around whatever strange, ancient, alien artifacts we are studying. Perhaps the House of Varun have a religious reverence for these mysterious structures left behind by a long lost race and view Constellation's efforts to uncover their secrets as a crime against the original builders. The House of Varun may fight against us as a result or maybe we could bring about a cooperation between the groups, somehow. Then we have what is probably my favorite minor faction we know about, the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet. Originally I thought that this group may be the equivalent of the Raiders in Fallout or Bandits in the Elder Scrolls, but I'm beginning to think that perhaps that is what the Violent Spaces will be for. I'm wondering if the Crimson Fleet will be a more interesting group and a proper faction of their own albeit a smaller one. Who knows, but I hope that they will be joinable. I quite fancy becoming the galaxy's most feared space pirate. And then we have the Ecliptic Mercenaries. No Bethesda game would be complete without some group of mercenaries. Again, this group could be very interesting if they are presented well, with a well-written backstory and interesting motivations. I'm guessing we will be able to join them and receive quests through their organization. They may give us the chance to live out our own Boba Fett fantasies and become a respected bounty hunter working for our Jabba the Hutt overlord. <laughs> and those are the factions that we know about so far. In addition to these, we have a few companies and manufacturers that we see printed onto the sides of various structures and ships. We may have the opportunity to interact with these groups and even do quests for them. Depending on how far Bethesda take it, we could end up with a situation similar to that in the Outer Worlds, with different businesses and companies all vying for control and power over the system. Although, in the case of Starfield, it seems as though the main factions will be the ones in power. When it comes to unreleased games, it's best to keep expectations fairly low, so it's probably a good idea not to expect too much. But for the factions and guilds in Starfield to really reach their maximum potential, having a reputation system for the player would be a must-have. They would have to include a faction rating system that is clearly displayed to the player and gives clear feedback on how the player's actions are affecting different factions and groups. This would make how actions in the game seem to carry more weight and encourage us to think carefully about each important decision. In any case, Getting to learn about and work with these different factions will no doubt make up much of the story. Deciding which factions are worthy of our time and debating which organization's cause most closely matches our tastes will be an important step, because if previous Bethesda games are anything to go by, chances are that whatever we choose will dramatically affect the settled system's future. Are there any factions that you would like to see added to Starfield? What do you think about the factions that we know about so far? Please let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day. With our combined strength, we can end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. I'll never join you! Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough! I am your father. No. No. Get
not true. That's impossible. Have a good one.